And now the man who knows that no matter who the guest is, the show is always about him. The host of Wind Funnel, Dino Bravo. I am entertaining, and I know what viewers like you want. I've been behind the wheel of a race car, I've been underneath the race car, turning the wrenches. I've been on both sides of this desk. I've been behind the camera, I've been in front of the camera, and I will bring 30 years of motorsports journalism to you in your living room. Glad to have you aboard on another edition of the Wind Funnel. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening. Dino, yeah. our guest isn't here yet. We're, we're on the, we're on He's the. not, the guest isn't here. What? We don't. No guest, no guest. We don't have a guest. No guest. We're on the air. Go get somebody. Just get <laughs> Great to have you aboard here on the Wind Funnel, and we are joined by... Uh, Hi. Dino, how you doing? Hi. And you are? Andy, owner of the Franklin Land Motor Speedway. And, oh, hey, he owns the joint. Here, Andy. Andy, uh, glad to have you on the Wind oh, Funnel. You know. All right. Hey, that's... Uh, it's a nice hat. Hold out there collecting that parking money. You know, that's where I recognized you from. Yeah, you were out there. And you didn't pay. Well, I had my media pass. The, you have your media pass. I, ha I had a media pass, media yeah. Pass. How much did that get? How much did that cost? Um, I, I, it was comp. Complimentary from oh, the complimentary. Oh, we don't have any the... complimentary here, do we? No no, 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 no. So what's going on? Okay. Well, how much <laughs> How much you need? Uh, let's see here. For you, uh, how about 40? Okay. I'll make it 50. Yeah. Can you put it on my tab? Yeah. Oh, let's make it 70. I can put it on your tab. Good. Would you do that? All right. Yeah. The, the wind funnel's good for it. The big okay. high dollar operation yeah. here. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Hey, tell us about this great facility that you have going uh, here, Franklin. It's, it's, it's a it's a great facility. Uh, uh huh. We're 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 gonna try and do our best with what we got from parking money. Yeah. Uh huh. So Which, it's not a lot, yeah. but IOUs. Um, I IOUs. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Do you you race you race in this too? Do I I no I don't no. No. Oh okay. All right. Else. All right. Okay. You All got right. me mistaken for something. All right, because there was a, I, I thought, I know. and we're joined by, um, <coughs> who's who's down here? That's Vera. Vera. Hi, Vera. How are you? This is, this is going pretty good so far, isn't it? Uh, is it time for last call? Yeah. Last call! Oh, all right, thank God. You know how this last call thing works? I have no idea. I ask you a question, no. you give me an answer. I'll give you a question. Okay. Mario Andretti or A.J. Foyt? Uh, wine? <laughs> oh, hold on. <sighs> Hello. All right, that's the wind funnel. Dino Bravo, Lucky Bob's Challenge 500 here at the uh, uh, what? The Frank Franklin Land Motor Speedway. Franklin Land Motor Speedway. He's Andy Spirit. I'm Dino Bravo, and you're the race fan paying the bill. Have fun, enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Franklin, Wisconsin, home of the Franklin Land Speedway, a fast oval racetrack, and the site of tonight's Lucky Bob's Challenge 500, the second round of the Triple Crown. There are three 500 lap mile races hey, on the circuit, right and Mark Hanvikas, right there. there's where we are, right there. He found it on the globe. Geography lesson is complete. Mark <laughs> passed. Uh, we have a big field tonight, Mark. 14 cars. 14 cars, first time this year, but the big thing, this is no longer an open class event. That's right, we're running club cars tonight. That means the speeds are a little bit down from last year, but that should really increase the competition. You hope so, but you know we've, we've had some issues down there already. Cars getting sideways, just like last year. It's who can keep their car under control. That's right. It's, it's an oval racetrack, and it's got a dis four distinct grooves. Last year, the outside was the place to be. Is that the same? So far, from what I've seen in practice, outside looks good, inside looks good. Green lane's going to be the tough one yet. All right, just keep it in the slot, keep it on the track. Anywhere you can run but the grandstands, it's Franklin Land Speedway, and it's the Lucky Bob's Challenge 500, and it's next. Hey.
I go now? You go now. Hey guy, what's this race called? Uh, Bob something. Oh, the Bob. Lucky, Lucky Bob, Banana Bob, Lucky Bob race. Sponge lucky Bob. SpongeBob, Lucky Bob 400 on the pole there. Look at the glare, it's giving me blinding. This is, uh, that's uh, uh, a Dan Margetta. And next to him, number one car, Red Bull car, that's uh, Jim, Jim Iverson. What do we have back here? Screaming shot, everybody. That's the boiler. The boiler's in row two. The boiler is in row two. Go boiler here at Franklin Land alongside him. Uh, that's John Shea. Hey, what's that guy? Well, that looks just like John Shea's car. That's the other guy, uh, Ev Kamakawa. And there's Larry Rodder. How many years has it been since he won a race, I heard? It's uh, 30. What were you doing in 1978? Uh, I was in the penitentiary at that time. Um, and now we go to the next row. Hey, I did this row. You do this row. Okay. That's the Sonny's Barbecue car. That's Mike. This is this row. Mike Fitzlaw. And next to him is Mike Kristoff. Let's review. Fitzlaw, Kristoff. They're in that row together. Hey, can you give me flashcards for that? I don't know them guys' names. And then back here, that's uh, the McDonald's car. That's Chris Spear. And uh, next to him, that's uh, he was pretty quick, but then he crashed and hit the wall. That's Mark Walzak. We still got more cars. We're not done yet. That's Dean Strom in the 34 car. People say this is a guy who's going to win this race. Coming way back here. Strom might be there. Alongside of him, it's the Barbie car. You don't got to do it this week. I get to talk about it. The Barbie car of hometown guy, Eddie Spear. There's still more cars? Holy holy cow, I can't believe it. And that, that car, uh, uh, that's Matt. I don't know his last name. Hayek. Hayek. Oh, he's a new guy. I don't know if I've seen him before. And, uh, this car here, that's Amy Butler. She's the last. That's the last car, right? That's it. Finally, that's your field, the biggest one of the year for the Lucky Bob's Challenge 500 at Franklin Land Speedway. The first heat race, Lucky Bob's Grand Prix, or uh, Challenge 500, as it were. Andy Spirit, your hometown favorite in this one, as well as Mark Walzak and John Shea, who is extra fast in that green and yellow, green and gold. Team Australia HO car. All right, early on in this thing right now. Oh, there's a couple of cars caught up into a mess there on the far turn. And John Shea out front. Hometown favorite Andy Spirit has managed to keep his car pretty stable on the track, and so he's leading right now, Dan Tommy Kendall. That's right, he's keeping the car on the ultra fast outside lane, which is a groove of preference here. And he's taking it to John Shea and Mark Walzak right now. Some of the heavy hitters are in trouble early on here in this first heat race. It's going to be that kind of night. We've seen it in practice. A lot of surprises in store. And the first of them is Andy Spirit leading this heat race. Oh, I got that. Oh, nice! Sweet! Oh, there you go. Alright, John Shea is leading this heat race. He's passed Andy Spirit just uh, past the halfway point. In the meantime, we've been watching uh, Mark Walzak, who has just has completely lost the handle on this car. But just a little while ago, he went right over the top. Oh, Problems for the Walzak car. The gear has gone out. All that spinning and sliding and Joey Chitwood stuff has messed up the gears. He's done. Looks like Mark Walzak is going to have a poor finish. We were looking for... We heard the sound, the, the, the stink whine of the gear strip. You can, you can tell that sound no matter where you are on these cars. He's putting it back together. Looks like they got it going. He'll be back out on the track to finish it. Mark, oh, no. It went away. It, it got off, but it had to... Uh, uh, you heard the ground gear. He's in the garage. He's done. It's over. The Walzak melt happened early. Go get it on the menu. It's here at Franklin Land. It's done. Your point leader is not going to have a good finish. So John Shea continues to lead as we wind down the first of four heat races tonight for the Lucky Bob's Challenge 500. Heat race number two, it's Mike Kristoff, Jim Iverson, Amy Butler, and Tom Spirit the Boiler. They'll be coming at you. Here they go at the fast Franklin Land Speedway. Oh, Kristoff will lead early. We have a crash there. between Butler, Iverson, and Spirit. Everybody but Mike Kristoff. 
We're looking at the first and second corners of Franklin Land Speedway. Again, a high speed, high banked oval. And you just see just how close the cars race here. Inches apart at a tremendous speed. You get the feel as they go by our still camera here. There they go by. Mike Kristoff leads early on here still. We begin the second half of this heat race. Mike Kristoff there has the lead. 23 laps on this guy, Jim Iverson, who's moved to the coveted outside lane. Can he make up 23 laps in five minutes? I think it's going to happen. You'll see a great comeback coming on here because Iverson is going to rock and roll on the outside. Unless he gets blocked like that, that's Kristoff throwing the block on him. Doesn't want him to take that lead. But there's already going to be one lap made up there. It'll be down to 22. 35 seconds to go. He's got 10 laps to make up. Can Jim Iverson do it? This guy's leading. Mike Kristoff is leading a heat race. Looking to make his second final of the year. But there goes Iverson blowing by. It is now nine laps. Nine laps. As Kristoff has led from start to finish. I don't think that's ever happened. That's a historical night for Mike Kristoff. I don't think Iverson's going to do it. He is way, way faster right now. But it's not going to happen. That's it. I think there's your winner. Yes, Mike Kristoff. We said we had surprises for you tonight. Here's one right there. The Matador on an oval is in the final. It's an oval. He's in the final. Kristoff has got something for him tonight. The third heat race is underway, but not without plenty of carnage so far. We've got rookie Matt Hayek in this one. Team Australia HO Ev Kamakawa and Dean Strom, who's been very fast at this track, won a heat race here last year, made the final. So Dean has a 13 lap lead over Ev Kamakawa. Then uh, you got Matt Hayek running in the red lane, and that's uh, the place where you make up the laps. The question is he's down by almost 40 laps. Can he make up that many laps? I don't know. Long way to go, but that's a long way back. And uh, little Chris Economaki is here in the booth. And, uh, well, little Chris, what do you think about this uh, oval action here? It's so fast, I, I watch too closely, I get dizzy, and then I fall over, and then they got to revive me. Okay, have a seat there so you don't fall over. I, I, was, I was sitting when I fell over. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's, I can understand how that could happen. All right, it looks like, uh, it looks like Dean Strom is going to win this heat race. Who'd have thunk it? I don't know. I put a lot of money on, uh, on, on him, so if he wins, I can pay my rent, and they won't kick me out of my house. Oh, illegal gambling. You better, you got to be careful. Aren't you on probation? Yeah, but but I don't know how they're going to find out. You know, I only, only turn I told with you. Oh, <laughs> there you go. And Dean Strom wins the third heat race to advance. <laughs> Final heat race features Dan Margetta, your pole sitter, along with Larry Rotter, Mike Fitzloff, and then you've got Chris Spear. And John Derek Daly, the trick here is just to hang on while that guy in the red lane in the first half builds up a lead, and then you stay close enough to uh, catch him. Well, that's exactly the key at this track here tonight. We saw it earlier tonight. The red lane seems to really be the favored lane tonight. And you almost have to just say, okay, I didn't get the lane that I wanted. I'm going to be behind, but if I can make it to halfway, and stay in striking distance. I'll be like a python springing up in that second half. A python? That's frightening. You're like the, the jungle guy there, that, that guy who dives into the, the jungle and lives off the elements. Tarzan. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. That, that isn't what I was thinking I of, but that Tarzan. works too. Mike Fitzloff has taken the lead. He's got about a three lap uh, edge now over Chris Spirit. Mike fortunate enough to move to that outside red lane. We've seen all the success there. Chris Spirit just moved into that next lane over from red from the outside down to blue. Oh no, how did you get, how did you show up here? What happened? <laughs> have you met, uh, have you met Elmer here, uh, Derek? No, as a matter of fact, I haven't. I've heard him on the last broadcast, but you know. Uh, so it's Elmer, hey? Name is Gus. Oh, oh. Sorry, I thought it was. It's not Elmer. Elmer's my brother. He's in San Antonio. <laughs> it's a lovely part of the country. It's a terrific part of the country. If you like steers and, well, you know. <laughs> it's where my son ended up moving. All right, the heat race is coming to an end, and it looks as though Mike Fitzloff is going to hold off Chris Spear and become the fourth entrant into the final of the Lucky Bob's Challenge 500. There we go. <laughs>
Hi, Kitty Bo Peep here. Anyway, I'm here with um, one of the pit crew. One of the pit crew guys. <laughs> for what team are you on? I'm Mike Kristoff, driver of the number three car. And why am I interviewing you? Have you been paying attention tonight? I made the final. No. Yeah. What was it this? What was it this race? It was, what? It was the red lane. I just I highly recommend the red lane to everybody. If you have the chance, drive that one. Uh, let's say you had gotten the green lane. Then somebody else would be standing here right now. Hi, Kitty Bo Peep here with John Shea. John, John, John. You look so handsome in that hat. Well, thank you very much there. Oh. It's uh, been a long time coming to get on this team, and we're running good. Oh. Australian boys and Kitty Bo Peep. Oh, I just don't know what to say about that. Well, so, so you got a little green on tonight, too. Oh, absolutely. Got a root for the Packers. Woo! Well, Go Packers! Got some yellow there. I got a little bit of yellow here. So is that your attempt at being a Packers fan? Yeah, sure. That's right. Okay, well, we'll take it. <laughs> so, John... We'll, we'll go along with that this week, sure. What lanes did you have? We were just talking to Mike. He said he had the, the red and the blue lane. And what did you have? I had the red and the blue lane. Worked out perfect. There you go. See, what did I tell you, folks? It's all about the luck of the lane draw and the chassis draw. You must have had a good chassis. I like the car. It's running good. Running good, definitely. Always uh, look forward to talking to you in Victory Lane. Maybe we'll see you later tonight. Oh, maybe. Party with the Aussies? Hey, a little vino? Oh, not so bad. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Hey, hello! Purr, purr. So now I have to ask you, I'm taking a poll. What lanes did you have? Uh, red and um, yellow. So are you optimistic about this final race? Uh, you know what? I'm optimistic about life because that's how I roll, dog. You know what I mean? So yes, I'm optimistic about this race. You're going to win. I'm going to see you after the race. You heard it here, folks. He is going to see me here after the race. Are you, are you saying you're going you're gonna to be interviewed by me? I'm going to see you after the race. Oh, well, that could mean anything, folks. You stay tuned to see. Hi, Kitty Bo Peep here with Mike Fitzloff. Mike, always so fun to interview you. I love interviewing Mike Fitzloff. So much fun. Who's he? I am the Lion King. It's time to go racing in the Lucky Bob's Challenge 500. The final four is set. There they go. They are off. John Shea will lead over Mike Fitzloff, Mike Kristoff, and Dean Strom. He's, he's just happy to be in the final. He's probably going to win it. He has no chance. The most talked about streak in, the, in sports right now in the HO Champ Car World Series is that of Larry Rodder who uh, once again did not make the final race. It's now grown up to be 31 races. We've joined Larry right now in the broadcast. Just to uh, bring an update to you fans. Larry, what happened to Rodertude Delgado? Where did he go? Uh, we're going to Mexico. I've given up on this. When you go to Mexico, is Jessica Simpson going along? <laughs> that would be nice. I don't really don't know, but that would be nice. I heard your teammate is going to pay for the vacation. <laughs> wow, it would be even better. <laughs> Looking at turn one as John Shea continues to lead over Mike Fitzloff and Mike Kristoff as the cars fly by. There they go. The speed they get here is tremendous. As they come, oh, nice. Sideways is Mike Fitzloff. Sideways through the corner. We are seeing all kinds of accidents right here in this corner. It's a very tight transition. And we haven't let Larry Rodder leave the booth yet. Larry, what's the key to getting around this place, especially in this tight turn here? Uh, crawl. Crawl really slow, huh? Yes, crawling slow. That's the only way. Can anybody handle John Shea in this race? No, he's looking really good. Uh, John should take this race, no problem. Halfway coming up right here, you'll see the car stop on the racetrack. Usually you don't see this when you're reviewing at home, but it's such a dramatic part of this race tonight, we will show it to you. There, we are halfway with that guy leading. John Shea leads over Mike Fitzloff, who leads over Mike Kristoff. Mark Walczak behind the uh, desk tonight. He gets red! He saw how dramatic that was, but he gets blue, which is going to be tough to beat. I don't think he can do it. I can have starts. It can mean one thing, and that's pit stops. John Shea will be the first car in the Team Australia car, and he is in the pits. Here we go. The car 
It is the crew is going after the car. They are checking something that the tires they're not changing tires for some reason. I don't know why they're changing. They're not changing tires. There might be a problem. There could be a problem. The calling is coming off. They are looking for it. It could be. I think that car is expired. I think something is wrong with that machine. The Australian car is done. I'm hearing that they left. I'm hearing that they they left the koala in the cow. The koala is in the cow. It's not happy and it's done. That car is out. That is the unluckiest guy here. We thought he had this in the bag. We, we have team radio. It's so disappointing and he's still sitting in the car. We're going to have to climb all into the car to get an interview with him. John, John, say you had this race won, man. <laughs> yeah, blew it up. <laughs> What'd you do? A clutch job or what? Yeah. I think we just wound her out a little bit too much. Uh, I was whipping it like a government mule in the first half of the end. I don't know. Spun a bearing, I guess. Did you spin it the wrong way? You spun it count or whatever, the Australian way. I had, to, I had to jack it up because of Strom in front of me right before the stop, and I think that might have might have stripped it out or spun a bearing or something. It's terrible. Yeah, they knew you were here, man. Yeah, well, it's the first time out at the track. Would have been nice to pick up a win, but, you know, we're going down the road, and... Knock the dust off down there somewhere. Who are you rooting for? Really don't care at this point. As here it comes, the pass for the lead. There it goes as Pitsloff takes off. This car is up front. It's Mike Kristoff. Everybody likes this. This is a happy, feel-good story. Everybody is going to like this story because this is our eighth winner of the year. But Mike Kristoff has a legitimate shot of winning a race, and it's causing all kinds of havoc around the world. Uh, that's right. I'm at the heating. Would you believe after all? It's freaking smelling here. Continue to ponder what's going on here with the world changing its polar moments because Mike Kristoff is actually leading a race and will probably win. Everett Bell has come up with some more. Uh, you know, I'm here at Denny's and I've actually seen a supermodel order seconds. As the crowd counts down with nine laps to go now, it's it's a bigger countdown than the ball coming down to New York. The crowd outside is going crazy because Mike Kristoff has won a race. It has happened the impossible. Earlier this year, he went to Road America. He went to Skip Barber School, learned how to drive. Mike Kristoff stuff has won. And it's a very uh, happy moment for this guy. He hasn't won in, it's been years. And we're looking for the winner of the race who has not made his way to Victory Lane. We're actually getting outside of Victory Lane because he's going the wrong way. He's used to taking that route so many times. That's out the tunnel. On the way home, back to the trailer. Not tonight, though. He has to ask his way how to get to Victory Lane. They're directing him towards Victory Lane. It's where the banner is. The track owner is waiting there. We're going this way. This is a, a long way. The scenic route to Victory Lane is Mike Kristoff. We're going through the behind-the-scenes way to Victory Lane. And we are going to get it. There we go. He has found it. Now we got to get in here. That's track owner Andy Spirit. He's got the Christmas wreath on. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Get to track owner Andy Spirit. Congratulations, Mike. Thank like you, to Andy. Present you with the pissing and broken connecting rod from John Shea's car. <laughs> yes, it is, which I most appropriately deserve. I want to dedicate this win to John because clearly I couldn't have done it without John's help. <laughs> that and I. A whole lot of luck tonight. You won, man. I know. This is amazing. This is great. All right. I mean, What's you know, Jerry say? dreams can come true. It's like I'm going to Disney World now. What goes on from here? How about next week at Bayside or, or Rapids? I don't know that it'll happen again, but I'm sure enjoying this one. All right. Mike Kristoff, your winner. Mike Kristoff, I'll say it again. Mike Kristoff won. There's a lot. You know, people bet on you. They're pretty rich right now. Yeah, I would imagine they would. There had to be extremely long odds on this happening tonight. But, you know, this is very exciting stuff, and I'm, I'm glad to be back on top of the podium. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got the hat dance even going on, too. Oh, wow. He's not used to doing See, I don't that. I how any of this works. Uh, they've changed. I won a race. Like five years ago, but uh, I don't recall how Victory Lane goes anymore, so I didn't even know where it was. Yeah, you just stand here and you put heads in here. I hope one of these is our sponsor. Well, there's your winner, Mike. Mike Kristoff. Thanks, for paying me. He gets paid because he won finally, and uh, oh, that's the yeah. lucky Ozzy, Bob. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! <laughs> <laughs> He's even doing Australian chants. Yeah. He's race in the Thanks city. Thanks to Lucky Bob's for uh, sponsoring the big race tonight. Right,